About a year ago, Angular added a signals primitive to the framework. This is something that has had considerable implications for the architecture of Angular applications, and it is still something that is evolving. The release of signal-based components is still to come, and experimental support for zoneless change detection has just landed. Along with everyone else, I've been experimenting with how best to use signals in an Angular application. Over the past year, I have used signals in production, I've experimented a lot in personal projects and projects I've created for various content and teaching purposes, as well as helping write and maintain an open source utility for signal state management. There is one fundamental idea that the community landed on early in this process and there seems to be a strong general consensus on, that observables are a good mechanism for dealing with events and signals are a good mechanism for dealing with state. That doesn't mean everyone agrees on building applications using both observables and signals. You'll find some people sticking to exclusively using RxJS and observables, some who are not using observables directly at all and are leaning much more into signals, and of course everything in between. As for myself, there are two particular patterns that I find myself reaching for over and over again, and both utilize both RxJS and signals. The two approaches I've been using are relying more heavily on RxJS and using to signal to get data from sources into signals, and the approach I landed on initially, having an imperative step that manually subscribes to observable sources to update a state signal. This manual subscribe step can be hidden away with libraries or utilities like connect or signal slice, which I often do. But fundamentally, this is still what is happening underneath, so that's what we will focus on. So let's take a look at an example to give some context. This is an example I created a while ago to show some hairier scenarios for state management. Specifically, this example includes pagination, error handling for requests that might fail, manual retries of failed requests triggered by a button click, and keeping track of a status state. The original implementation uses the second approach I mentioned. And this approach has remained unchanged since the initial video I published on the topic. So I'll link to that in the description if you want a little more context. But the basic idea is that we have our sources of data which are observable streams. Often the basic RxJS concepts like switch map are used to deal with asynchronous behavior. But generally the amount of RxJS required here and the amount of RxJS mental models you need to understand is kept quite minimal. Then for each one of these sources, we manually subscribe to it and we define how we want this source to update the state whenever it emits. Basically, it's the Redux pattern. Actions are triggered, reduces determine how those actions should update the state, and then we select from that state. The key idea here and the difference to the two signal approach is that we are leaning more on signals to manage the state. In determining how to update the state, the signal has access to all of the other state directly and it can update the state however it likes. This is both the power and the weakness of this approach. We are given more flexibility and arguably less complexity when updating state, but we lose some level of declarativeness. However, once the state is set in the signal, everything after this point can still be derived declaratively. But this manual subscribe step is like a little break or bridge in what would otherwise be a more declarative approach. Now let's see why this trade-off might be worthwhile. And I say might because I think it depends on you and your team's RxJS knowledge and personal preference. I would argue that the two signal approach is, without considering the broader context, the better approach. Here is the same code refactored to use two signal instead. The first thing to notice here is that there is now no manual subscribe step, but you may also notice that our source streams are a bit more complex. That is because now we are leaning more on RxJS to deal with the interplay of various sources and how our state is calculated. The to signal step generally just takes the source streams and converts them to signals. This is still a reasonably simple example, so it's not too bad, but there is already some more advanced RxJS concepts creeping in here. In the previous example, we handle clearing the articles for the current page whenever the current page number source emits in the reducer step. But now we need to make sure this happens in the articles for page stream itself, which we can do easily enough by adding a start with operator inside of the switch map. This way, every time the current page changes and we switch to the stream to load the data, it will also emit an empty array first, which will handle clearing the existing data until this asynchronous request completes. Another thing that is quite easy to handle with the Redux-like approach is updating our status state because we can just set it to whatever we want in response to any of our sources emitting. 
But with toSignal, we need to handle that on the RxJS side of things. So we can create a status stream that is derived from any of the streams that affect the status state. In this case, the status should be success whenever articles for page emits a non-empty array. It should be loading whenever current page or retry emit a value. And it should be error whenever the error stream emits. So we merge all of these together and map them to the appropriate values. And whichever one has emitted last is what the status will be. This is also quite nice and easy enough if you're comfortable with RxJS, but maybe not so much if you aren't. Even if the code here isn't overly complex, the mental model required to get to this point can be quite challenging too. Perhaps the most devious issue here is the necessity for share replay. With the more imperative Redux approach, you are generally just going to have one subscription to each source and the interplay of data between sources happens in the reducer step. But since with the two signal approach, we need to mix streams together to derive the data we need, we might end up, like I did here, with two separate streams piping off the same stream, which is going to result in two subscriptions when you use two signal. That is why I had to add a share replay here, which will share previous emissions on this stream with new subscribers, rather than re-executing the observables logic for every new subscriber. This was required to fix a bug that happens without share replay, not to mention the inefficiency of running the logic for this observable twice. This is the sort of stuff that bites people with RxJS a lot. I have invested a lot of time into learning and using RxJS, and I like to think I have a pretty good grasp of it. But I still frequently make mistakes like this, and the confusing behavior this created resulted in me spending a solid 20 minutes trying to figure out what was going on. You could argue this is a skill issue, and the solution is to just get good. I don't disagree with this mentality, and generally I think if writing good code requires hard concepts, then the solution is to learn those hard concepts, not write worse code. But in this case, with signals, I think we can utilize just the most basic concepts of RxJS to achieve a result that doesn't really lose anything important. The Redux style approach is more imperative, but it still maintains most of the benefit of a declarative code base. And the payoff is that we eliminate the need for most of RxJS's more complex concepts most of the time, while still having them available if required. To be clear, I'm not against the two signal approach, and I have used it with success in a production environment on situations that are far more complex than the example we have looked at here. On the whole, I think I actually prefer it. But the point is that it does require much stronger RxJS knowledge, which is great if you have that knowledge. But as a general solution, I feel more comfortable recommending by default. I think that's going to be the same approach I landed on initially, the Redux style combination of RxJS and signals. My ultimate goal is to encourage more declarative code, but if people find the concept so unapproachable that few people ever learn or implement them, then it is a useless pursuit. My view is that this Redux style approach sacrifices a small amount of declarativeness for something that is far more approachable and less confusing to debug for people. Anyway, I'd love to hear what you think on this topic and just how you are approaching signals in general. If you like this video, consider dropping a like or subscribe before you go, and I hope to catch you back here again.